In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest St. John Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, grant we pray that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, I have appointed you as sentry to the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from me, warn them in my name. If I say to a wicked man, You are to die, and you do not warn him, if you do not speak and warn him to renounce his evil ways and so live, then he shall die for his sin, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, however, you do warn a wicked man, and he does not renounce his wickedness and his evil ways, then he shall die for his sin, but you yourself will have saved your life. When the upright man renounces his integrity to do evil, and I set a trap for him, he too shall die. Since you failed to warn him, he shall die for his sin, and the integrity he practised will no longer be remembered but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, however, you warn the upright man not to sin, and he abstains from sinning, he shall live thanks to your warning, and you too will have saved your life. The Word of the Lord Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us, he is faithful forever. Go out to the whole world. Proclaim the good news. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made a tour through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. And when he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. He summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Vianney, and coincidentally, he is also my patron saint. So some of you know me as John Derrick, and my John um, is actually uh, St. John Vianney. And I didn't ask for, um, to do today's reflection. It was given to me, so it's a blessed coincidence, and I'm happy to do it. St. John Vianney has been very important for my spiritual life because I remember that I was having this period of dryness. This was after my baptism at 16. Yeah? That's why I could choose my baptismal name. Um, 
And it was a, a little book on St. John Vianney that, after reading it, um, I felt that God was alive in my spirit again. And it was the very life of St. John Vianney that touched my heart. I don't think it's just some individual thing that he did, but it's who he is. And I'm going to share with you this prayer of St. John Vianney, and I think from this prayer you will understand what I'm talking about. So here goes, the prayer of St. John Vianney. I love you, O oh my God, and my only desire is to love you until the last breath of my life. I love you, O oh my infinitely lovable God, and I would rather die loving you than live without loving you. I love you, Lord, and the only grace I ask is to love you eternally. My God, if my tongue cannot say in every moment that I love you, I want my heart to repeat it to you as often as I draw breath. Amen. You can see that the life of St. John Vianney was just filled with this desire to love God. And which is why whatever he did, his preaching, his encountering his parishioners who were often indifferent and cold. And during the time of France, uh, the time that he lived, was the time of the revolution. And it was also when Napoleon was gathering people to, uh, to form his army to invade. It was indeed tumultuous times, especially for the church that was being rejected and clergy was being killed simply for, by, because they were clergy, by being priests. But John, St. John Vianney still had that courage to continue living for God because he did feel that God was alive for him. And which is why he, he had this prayer, this desire to love God and to keep loving God. And I think that's why he's powerful in his preaching, in hearing confessions. It's said that up to 20,000 pilgrims visit him a year. Um, when he was alive, and he had long queues uh, outside his confessional, and he would eat very little, um, fasting uh, for the sake of his own spiritual life, but also for, for the people that are coming to him. And the devil himself apparently uh, tried to burn down his bed, uh, tried to disturb him when he was sleeping, and even abused him physically. All because he was doing God's work. All because he is loving God with his entire life. So my dear friends, today, maybe we can just try to imitate St. John Vianney in the desire to love. And in our gospel, we hear that Jesus had pity on those around him because they were harassed and dejected and they were like sheep without a shepherd. So with this shepherd's heart, Jesus cared for his people just like St. John Vianney cared for the many people and sacrificing sleep. Um, what about us? Yes, we're not called to be priests or religious, but God has a vocation and a mission for us too. That the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. And we cannot depend on priests and religious to do the evangelizing, the curing, the preaching, the works of kindness, the loving presence of God to the many people who are suffering, who are isolated, who feel worthless, who are in pain, who are in darkness. So, who does God send? You. But how are you going to go if you do not have the love of God within you, if you do not desire the love of God? And I think today, following the example of St. John Vianney, let us desire, desire the love of God. And I don't know whether you know that St. John Vianney is also belonging to the third order of St. Francis, and perhaps he caught a little bit of Franciscan spirit there, that because St. Francis always desired, desired God, um, and so did St. John Vianney. So let us continue to allow God um, to pour out his grace upon us. We don't know how that would look like, but so long as we open our hearts, keep desiring the Lord and desire to do his will, and desire to bring this love, this grace, and mercy to people around us, 
So long as we're available and open, God will use us. And now with confidence, we now pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Blessed John Vianney, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.